Hello, I'm Bruce Janey, and today in Homemade Science, we want to see if it's possible to rifle my PVC egg cannon or rifle the Sabo that the egg fits into. Now, I am using expired eggs. These are too old for eating, but they make great ammunition. Actually, challenging ammunition might be a better description. First of all, they break easily, so they have to be fitted inside a Sabo. And then once fired, they tend to tumble and turn sideways until they hit something. When I first started shooting at targets, its flight reminded me of the old musket rifles. The flight path was very erratic. I thought it'd be a good challenge to see if I could improve it. The idea is that a spinning projectile will be more stable than one that isn't. In trying to get the egg and sabo to spin, I looked at several possibilities. The first one was looking at the barrel itself and trying to figure out a way to rifle it. In this instance, rifling refers to the grooves that are cut into a gun barrel. These grooves rub against the bullet and cause it to spin. My idea was to heat this metal pipe and also the plastic barrel. I then pulled it across this flared end of the pipe, turning it as I'm pulling. The result is it gave me ridges inside the PVC pipe, much like the ones that I'd see inside a real gun. Three, two, one. With this short barrel, I wasn't expecting much, but it actually worked. I calculated it to have about 1,600 revolutions per minute. Another possibility was changing the Sabo itself. This next design was patterned after a rifled shotgun slug. The ceiling ring keeps the gases from escaping, while these raised ribs rub against the inside of the barrel to make it turn. We'll try out this next Sabo, if I can ever get my cameraman back here. This is a Varla electric scooter. My friend George and I are testing it out and we'll be using it a little bit later when we do some field trials. All right, let's give this one a try. We tried a few variations, but we couldn't generate enough friction to make it turn. Well, the friction didn't work, but another idea is to turn this into a type of turbine. As the compressed air pushes it forward, some of it will pass through these channels and cause it to turn. I can use the exhaust from the shop vac to demonstrate. Now I tried variations in the design and also in the materials I used, but I started out using cardboard tubing and strips of foam. One. This one was made out of an old cardboard mailing tube and it worked well. And this one was made out of heavy stock paper. It's the lightest and it also consistently gave us the highest spin rate. With this one, we can actually calculate the egg spinning at about 4,200 RPMs. Unfortunately, it's spinning along the wrong axis. Here's some examples of our results. The range could go anywhere from two to 4,000 RPMs. These next Sabos were 3D printed. This one actually has 12 channels, and this one has 10, and I have another one here that was made from a PVC pipe, and this one actually has 22 channels cut into the side of it. Now I found these did have one problem. Turning the Sabo didn't necessarily turn the egg, so I coated the inside with silicone to give it a better grip. This shot I calculated the spin of the egg to be about 2,000 RPMs. So the plastic sabos gave us about the same results as the cardboard ones. They held up better, but it did take the eggs a little bit longer to separate from them. Well, now that we see that it works, let's go do some field tests. We put a barrel out in the field at 110 yards as our target but we don't really expect to hit it. Three, two, one. 
This one had a nice smooth path to it, versus this one that's not spinning and it's all over the place. What we're looking for is a nice smooth curve. Like this one. I think this was one of the most amazing shots of the day. We can see that it doesn't fly very straight and then once it lands, it actually bounces. Once again, these are all raw eggs. We decided to move the barrel a little bit closer, this time to 75 yards, giving us a better chance of hitting it. So now it's a matter of readjusting the amount of pressure and the cannon angle to get us to the target. Overall, I'd say the rifled sabos have helped to make the eggs fly straighter. However, even with reduced pressure, forcing them to spin ended up breaking a lot of the eggs. Now this next idea doesn't make the egg spin, but it may help the egg to fly straighter. On this egg, we've glued stabilizer fins to the back of it. These flew very straight, but it was very time consuming building each one. An even simpler idea was to hot glue a stabilizing tail onto the one end of the egg. This idea worked really well, but the original intent of this investigation was to not alter the egg. Well, after about 25 shots, we still weren't able to hit that barrel. We did get pretty close. I think from this point on, we'll just stick to shooting them close range. That way we get to see the egg hit the target. Well, not always. Sometimes the egg doesn't have enough time to get out of these plastic sabos. If they hit the target, they get destroyed. Well, let's see if I can get my Sabo back. Okay, that one's done for. I think soda bottles are one of my favorite targets. Of course, it's more fun if you actually hit them. And of course, it's always a good idea to remove the ramrod before shooting. Now that we figured out how to make the egg go straighter, I think our future goal is to try and get the egg over 500 miles an hour. Hopefully this cannon will do the trick. About the time I started this video, the Varla company asked me if I'd test one of their scooters, and I just had to say yes. Let me show you why. After looking at the reviews for it, I thought it had a lot of good features, and I was anxious to try them out. I started out with some easy runs on some rail trails just to get myself acquainted with it. This is much more rugged than the street scooters that I've ridden in the past. First thing I wanted to test was how well do these things stop? This one has dual hydraulic disc brakes, which are much better than the ones that are operated by cable. To test them, I did a series of panic stops, something that's a good idea no matter what you're riding. The best stop was about 27 feet, which was about the same as it was for the bicycle. After getting better acquainted with it, I wanted to see what it could do on the road. They advertised it as going over 40 miles an hour. I got it up to about 37. We have quite a few hills around us. This is the steepest one I could find, and I'm going up it at about 26 miles an hour. What I was really looking forward to was going off-road, and this was a lot of fun. The scooter has motors mounted in both hubs for two-wheel drive, and has a peak power rating of 3,200 watts, which means going up this hill was no problem. It's got a 52-volt battery with a promise of 42 miles, of course, that's going to depend on your riding conditions. I also want to check out the suspension. It's riding on 10 inch by 3.5 inch tires, 
with independent suspension on each wheel. As you can see, it's handling this rough patch really well. Middle of making the video, we had a snowstorm come through, so I got to try it out in a couple inches of snow. You can do it if you're careful, but I think I'll stick to skis. It was also a big help during our field testing, getting us from one end of the field to the other much quicker. Well, this really has been a lot of fun. If you're interested in one of these, I have a connection down in my comments section. I'll take you right to Varda's website, plus give you a good discount.